Travis Wayne Goodsell. Oh man, I uh, didn't go to sleep until 1.30, 2.30 this morning. I think 1.30. Yeah, 1.30. <clears throat> when uh, you know of a, a threat that will cause great destruction, you can't just sit back and go, well, you know, it's out of my hands. You have to do something. And I've told you about the real church history. About Canandaigua, New York. Where Joseph Smith Sr. was the Master Mason. And the incident that occurred in 1826. The origins of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is not what we are being told. And thus, what we are experiencing is not the way in which we should be right now. On the 19th of July, 1840, Joseph Smith gave a talk again condemning the Twelve, now under the leadership of Brigham Young, calling them Judas. He warns that America has a threat to be destroyed, that the Constitution is in great jeopardy, and says that his organization was supposed to save it. And so in order to save it, it was necessary that his organization be built up and eventually build the mountain cities of Zion and New Jerusalem. Utah was never meant to be the mountain city. <clears throat> it's been a while since I've talked about this subject, so we'll bring it up as there may be a whole new batch of people listening as YouTube already is shutting me down further. The test I ran yesterday uh, confirmed this. See, I started with Travis Wayne Goodsell. I was getting up to a thousand for views. The biggest video is upwards of 38,000. That was back in July of 2017. That's the signs in the heaven. <clears throat> the church then shut it down, ordered YouTube to silence me, to have me stop posting videos. And so then they, uh, then I went to. TWG, which was being used as uh, my next business channel. I was trying to separate business from the church. Business being that of translation, specifically as a decipherer of Paleo Hebrew and a decipherer of Egyptian picture glyphs, the facsimiles not the text that accompanies the facsimiles or within papyri because that's already been translated deciphered and 
going to the TWG channel, I was able to get up to 100. So already I was being attacked. But I would have breakouts that would get into the thousands. <clears throat> That's what I referred to when I say a breakout video. And then, not too long ago, the church got pissed when I started posting about the church's sex crimes, sex slavery and sex trafficking. And so again, YouTube was ordered, as there's a financial criminal involvement with the church, to sh shut me down and stop me from posting videos. And thus they did. So I went back to Travis Wayne Goodsell, as uh, the time had passed that I was able to post again. This time, I'm only able to reach the 50s. See what YouTube has done? And so, yesterday, I ran the test to see if I can post again on TWG. Ten. I'm being squeezed out of YouTube illegally. I've done nothing wrong. I've just exposed the church and their crimes. And so, the information that you have not heard for a while, if you have been following me for the while, I heard it, was that when I moved to Utah, I got abandoned by the first wife. She didn't like it that I pursued in my extracurricular time, having the necessity of working to take care of the family, because I had just deciphered Paleo Hebrew in February of 1997. And so by April, she was gone, saying, My kids will not learn Hebrew. But I had to redo my research, because she stole it all, took it with her, along with the kids. <clears throat> and having done it again, because it's simple enough, but uh, this time I thought, I'll go to the church, let them know about it, this great news. Joseph Smith is correct in the King Follett Discourse. That was my whole intention of pursuing ancient languages, is because Joseph Smith, duh, I believed that he was a true prophet, and therefore, if I were to pursue scientifically, I would confirm it, and I did for the King Follett Discourse of his re-translation of Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 from the Hebrew text. And I've given you those examples. At this time I was in the younger singles ward because the stake president came to me and said you're not welcome in the family ward. <laughs> he didn't say that, but that's what he meant. He meant I needed to get married again. Because that's what it's all about in the church. you got to get married. you got to find a wife. Get back to taking care of them rather than Hebrew. 
<laughs> but in the singles ward, it was under a different state president and under a different bishop. And I had been in contact with F. Michael Watson, secretary to Gordon B. Hinckley. Yep, right up to the top. And one day my stake president called me in. And so I came one Sunday and I was interrogated. The whole stake presidency, the whole bishopric, were crammed into that tiny little room and asking me who I told about my Paleo-Hebrew decipherment and translation discoveries. What the hell? This is the church. I just showed how Joseph Smith is correct as a translator not knowing that the church had already been in the workings to dismiss Joseph Smith as a translator. This was before the Gospel Topics essays with translation and historicity of the Book of Abraham where it's the official church position that Joseph Smith is only a revelator that the gift and power of God was not translation it was revelation so when Joseph Smith says he's a prophet, seer, revelator, and translator, what he meant was prophet, seer, revelator, and revelator. But again, I'm still naive. And I'm thinking that maybe they just don't know and don't understand because it's not Hinckley. And that's what got them off of me. Because I told them to their face, Hinckley doesn't even know about this. Because they all thought he did. Because it was F. Michael Watson. And so that was what allowed me to believe maybe the prophets aren't involved in any of this. That it's just the Mormons who are wicked. But I was interrogated as if I had been a criminal with the spotlight on me in the interrogator's office at a police department or the FBI or of a criminal organization who found out I'm the leak and they're trying to find out how far and wide the leak got spread so that they can close up the leaks. second one that's actually the case. And so, uh, having been treated harshly by the church, the church ordered for my indefinite incarceration, having paid for it, and paid to have me assassinated. I've done those videos showing my being hospitalized. All because I found out they're frauds. That Joseph Smith is legit. They're the frauds. Well, they came back at me as I got out, obviously. Here I am wasn't supposed to get out, but I did. And so they came at me again. And this time I said, alright, I need to find out if this goes to the prophets. If the prophets are giving the orders. Found the money trail. Did my research on church history. Sure enough, there it was. And as a result 
I also found out the Book of Mormon is not a real brass Egyptian or a golden, well, gold in the history uh, treasure plates that were buried in the ground by the ancient indigenous people of America. It's not a history. And I've learned that, oh, okay, this is all coding from there being Knights Templar, Smith Sr., Master Mason, York Wrights, Canandaigua, Knights Templar, highest rank. There's a connection. That's why they talked about the coming forth of the Book of Mormon in the manner in which they did. Everything from Joseph Smith lifting up the rock to unearth the hidden treasure plates underneath with his rocks placed in a hat to reveal the hidden treasure plates message. It's the exact same symbolism. It's not magic Mormonism in the magic world view. Yes, I know he's now dead. But he's still wrong. He didn't do his research thoroughly. And knowing that the Doctrine and Covenants was coded, as I myself, thanks to my saying Hinckley didn't know anything about it, I was then promoted to the top scholar in Mormonism to work on what became the 2009 edition of the scriptures for foreign languages. We do not have the English version because Ballard's still alive. They have this thing about not changing the work of somebody who's living. They wait until McConkie is dead before they destroy his legacy. <laughs> Though McConkie's legacy did need to be destroyed. Dear God, fence sitters. And so, yes. I'm the one who's informed you guys that the Wikipedia page on the list of code names for the Doctrine and Covenants is a little misguided. They didn't translate all of it. Doctrine and Covenants, section 1, verse 16. So their whole claim of speculation as to why certain parts, certain parts were coded and not others, not others, is wrong. <clears throat> they were coding the whole time. And again, Book of Mormon, not history. What then is it? Doctrine and Covenants was coded. Maybe Book of Mormon too? Yeah, sure enough. There's these things called signs in the heavens, which the science of astronomy can tell us exactly when those signs in the heavens are to occur. That's the date code. The stories are the event code for those dates. And if you're wondering when those dates are, seriously, you're new, huh? 2017 to 2024. Because I've gone on to find that the Bible is also coded in that manner. Samson, for example. The Sun King, as I'm the decipher of Paleo-Hebrew. Paleo the three deaths. The lion, his wife, and him. Our total solar eclipses giving us the dates. Between 2017 and 2024. So, yes, even Revelation. Revelation 12 is Samuel the Lamanite's birthday sign in the heaven. And then the death day sign in the heaven that Samuel talks about 
is Revelation 19, 11 and 17. And so, because the Book of Mormon is not a real history, the characters are not real, which means that the history is also coded. Not just the Doctrine and Covenants, not just the Book of Mormon, but also the history. And so there was no first vision of Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ. There was no vision or visit by Moroni, which was incorrect. He was visited by Nephi, as he claims. That's the correct code. And so there was no appearance of John the Baptist, Peter, James, and John, Elijah, Moses. Those are code. The keys of the presidency of the church for the first president are not Peter, James, and John. They're Moses' keys. Again, it's code. And so, as I told you about July 19th, 1840, in the mountain cities, let me take you to 1st Nephi, chapter 13, verse 37. This is Nephi's dream. He's already talked about how we need... A, uh, no. It's not. He gets to it. He tells us to refer to John, who is the Apostle of the Lamb, who will write about the latter days. As the Book of Mormon tells us, those signs of the latter days, not just Samuel, that gives us the 2017-2024 dates, with the signs in the heavens, but Lehi, in the very beginning of the book, talks about 2017, 2024, in a combo dream sign in the heaven. God sitting upon his throne, 2017, one descending, like the sun at noonday. That's Emmanuel. That's 2024. Twelve others following him back to, to 2017. The book about the destruction. That's this whole date period time thing. And so you read about King Zedekiah being put on the throne of Judah. But you got to go to Jeremiah to find out that Babylon put him on the throne. He was not the legitimate successor. So in 2017, what did America have? Huh. Have you been paying attention to your book of Revelation? Chapter 13, specifically. Have you paid attention to that beast's that image of the beast on TV and digital streaming? Are you familiar with what was worn on the foreheads of his followers? Are you familiar with him trying to get everybody to have ID to buy and to sell? He's not done yet. We're not done yet. We're not to 2024 yet. But there's also a false prophet talked about. He too raised an idol. And also is setting things up for us to buy and to sell. When a certain destruction occurs and the state will become an independent kingdom again. To restore polygamy. And so, 37, blessed are they who shall seek, who shall seek. See, it's up to righteous people to do the work necessary to find this information out. 
and then to seek to bring forth my Zion at that day. Joseph Smith said it needed to be built before 2017. Oops! For they shall have the gift and power of the Holy Ghost, and if they endure unto the end. What is the end? The destruction, when the wicked are destroyed. Remember, it's supposed to already be built. It's not. What does the Book of Mormon warn? No, ether. Moroni, the entire destruction of my people, they shall be lifted up at the last day, 8 April 2024. What does lifted up mean? Oh, it's resurrection, Travis. Are you sure? It means optimism. Lift up your spirits. You sh they shall be optimistic at the last day. They shall not be destroyed because they were wicked. They're going to be optimistic. And shall be saved. Saved? Yes. Because Doctrine and Covenant section 45 talks about how Jerusalem, Zion, will be the only place on earth that will not be at war. It will be a place of safety, refuge, and peace. And for what? Oh, it also talks about in verse 31 of that same section about a coronavirus. That's what we were supposed to be protected from. Wonder how that worked. Saved in the everlasting kingdom. The kingdom was supposed to save us from the wars and the virus. Now, do you see how wicked the church is? And whoso shall publish peace, yea, tidings of great joy, how beautiful upon the mountains they shall be. Oh, well, that's what Abinadi was interrogated by the wicked priests of King Noah as he turned it back on them and said, Hey, this anachronism in the Bible called the Ten Commandments is what you're not following. I did the video yesterday. <clears throat> so this is what they're warning us about that we were supposed to be righteous and do as Joseph Smith asked to save America to rescue the Constitution to have Zion and New Jerusalem the mountain cities built in preparation for this. How beautiful upon the mountains they shall be. Not Utah. The mountain cities of Zion and New Jerusalem that Joseph Smith talked about in 19 July 1840 of which Brigham Young did not want in his Doctrine and Covenants. And it never got published in anybody else's either. But but thanks to the Joseph Smith papers, and they're putting it online for those of us who are poor, we can find it. So there you go.